because of the theft that happened on last week. And that was a hurtful thing. But God is working everything out on our behalf. But after hearing about what happened yesterday in Uvalde, Texas, our situation at the church doesn't even compare to the hurting families that lost their children and loved ones at the hand of gun violence. We need God's help. We need God's help all over this land and country. From the White House to the Poor House, we need God's help in this country. And we are trusting God to turn our situation around. Because God is in complete control of everything. God sees everything. God knows everything. So we're trusting God to turn it around. Our song for tonight is, Tis So Sweet to Trust in Jesus. Just to take him at his word. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. The scripture says, don't be afraid. For I am with you. Don't be discouraged, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will hold you up with my vicious, victorious right hand. And that's from Isaiah 41 and 10. The words again, I'm so glad I've learned to trust thee. Precious Jesus, Savior, friend. And I know that thou art with me, will be with me to the end. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus.
Jesus. We trust you. Amen. Thank God for another privilege, another opportunity to come before him and study and look into his word. God has blessed us again. And we thank you again tonight for joining us. <clears throat> We're in Isaiah chapter 41, verse number 10. It's time for us to take a break from our usual series to address those things that are before us. Isaiah chapter 41, verse number 10. The book is Isaiah, the chapter is 41 in the Old Testament and the verse is verse number 10. The Bible speaks well in these times. The Bible gives us answers in such a time as these. We find that we'll discover these words. Fear not, for I'm with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Let me read that again. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. God is with us. God is with us. Regardless of what we go through today, we must remember beyond a shadow of a doubt that God is with us. God is talking to the children of Israel. He's talking to the Israelites. He's talking to the nation of Israel. And he's saying that I have chosen you. During this time, Israel was fighting against other nations. God gives security to Israel tonight as he gives security to us. He says, fear not. This, this phrase, fear not, means don't be afraid. Things are happening around us today that has never happened before. Yeah, we believe that there's nothing new under the sun. We believe that men's hearts are corrupt as they have been corrupt before. But we are seeing things in our generations that have never we have never seen before. Lifestyles that we've never seen before. Disrespect for God at an all-time high. Life as we know it is different from what we have known. When you ch send your child to school, you send them to school to return and talk about the great day that they have had. But for some, 10 years old and under, they won't have that joy of running back in the house. It looks as if the devil is on the run. It looks like the devil is, is taking full control. It seems like the prince of this air has everything that he wants to have and he's running things the way he wants to run them. But the good news tonight is God is yet in control. I must just take a break from our usual series to address those things that are before us. Isaiah chapter 41 verse number 10. The book is Isaiah, the chapter is 41 in the Old Testament and the verse is verse number 10. The Bible speaks well in these times. The Bible gives us answers in such a time as these. We find that we'll discover these words. Fear not, for I'm with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Let me read that again. Fear not, for I am with you. 
Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. God is with us. God is with us. Regardless of what we go through today, we must remember beyond a shadow of a doubt that God is with us. God is talking to the children of Israel. He's talking to the Israelites. He's talking to the nation of Israel. And he's saying that I have chosen you. During this time, Israel was fighting against other nations. God gives security to Israel tonight as he gives security to us. He says, fear not. This phrase, fear not, means don't be afraid. Things are happening around us today that has never happened before. Yeah, we believe that there's nothing new under the sun. We believe that men's hearts are corrupt as they have been corrupt before. But we are seeing things in our generations that have never we have never seen before lifestyles that we've never seen before. Disrespect for God at an all-time high. Life as we know it is different from what we have known. When you ch send your child to school, you send them to school to return and talk about the great day that they have had. But for some, 10 years old and under, they won't have that joy of running back in the house. It looks as if the devil is on the run. It looks like the devil is, is taking full control. It seems like the prince of this air has everything that he wants to have and he's running things the way he wants to run them. But the good news tonight is God is yet in control. I know, I know it doesn't seem like it. I know that we ought to be fearful. I know that it looks like the devil has a campaign that is thriving. But I say to you tonight, fear not, don't be afraid. I say we ought to be concerned. I say we ought to allow these things to knock us to our knees and we get up again. These things ought to knock us to our knees where we will spend our time in prayer. Yeah, we're broadcasting from the, from the living room. You see Sister Davis' picture when she was a lot younger. You see the curtains pe peeking out of the corners. It's not the ideal setting for church as we know it. But we realize that the church is in us. We realize that the church goes wherever we go. We realize that the church, the body of Christ, should be on the move. And yes, we are on the move tonight. The text says, fear not. And it gives a reason why we ought not to fear. The text declares, for I am with you. God is talking. God is saying, I'm with you. God is talking. God is saying that regardless of what goes on around you, I'm with you. It's a good thing to know. It's a great thing to know that the Almighty God, the righteous God, God Himself is with us. It's, it's a good thing to know that friends are with us. It's a good thing to know that family is with us. It's a good thing to know that neighbors are holding our arms and by our side. But it's a blessing to know that Almighty God is with us. He says, I, I'm with you. He, he's walking with us. He's walking before us. He's walking beside us. 
we'll find out from, from the lesson tonight that he's always walking behind us. He says, fear not. God is saying to us, if you're going to turn to anybody during these times, turn to God. God is saying, if you're going to depend on anybody or anything, depend on God during these times. I know life is hard. I know situations are terrible. I know that we have men who won't work, but they will take. I say to you tonight, trust God in it. I realize that fear comes upon us and takes over us many times. But God has promised to be with us. In the midst of our bereavement, in the midst of our troubles, in the midst of all that we go through, we need to understand that the Almighty God, the great I Am, He says He's with us. He says, fear not, for I'm with you. The God that we serve is all places at the same time. He is the comforter. He is the one that keeps us strong and makes us strong in the midst of hard times. We're living in some tough times. Grandparents used to say we're living in the last days. And here I am today and I'm saying to you, we're living in the last days. But God is with us. He says, fear not, for I'm with you. And then he says, be not dismayed. In other words, don't be discouraged. Don't be bewildered. Don't be confused of all these happenings. For God is with us. He says, be not dismayed. Be not dismayed because in the midst of all the confusion, you got to trust God. In the midst of lives being taken, innocent lives, God is with us. He says, for I am your God. He says, be not dismayed because he, he doesn't want you to be confused of who's walking with you. God is saying, I'm not sending anybody else. I am your God. I am with you. He says, for I'm your God. This word God means I'm the ruler. God the, the judge. God the mighty one. God the great one. This exceeding God, the Almighty God is with us. And as you go through your day and you look at your troubles, remember God is with you. Most of you have heard on Friday morning before day, mean men came and stole electrical wire from our church and therefore we're in the, in the living room now. And person after person after person who has called me, they ask the question, are you human? Do you ever get sad? Do you ever get down? Yes, I do. But I have to remember the God I serve is the almighty God. This word God means that he is the judge. He has the last words. And as he speaks to Israel tonight, he also speaks to the New Beginning Church that I am the judge. I am the ruler. I am the mighty one. I'm the great one. And I have the last word. Regardless of what goes on around us, the God we serve has the last word. He is the judge. God goes on to say, I will strengthen you. This word strengthen means that I will make you strong. I will fortify you. And I will increase your strength. He says that, that I will strengthen you to the point where you will be fortified. Where nothing from the outside can overtake you. He wants to fortify our hearts. Fortify our minds. He wants to fortify our spirit. The devil comes but to steal, to kill, and destroy. But God is with us and he's come to strengthen us. The devil comes and he presents himself 
as mighty. But the good thing is, God is almighty. So be encouraged today, my dears, to know that God will strengthen you in the toughest times of your life. And today we need God's strength. When people ask, well, do you ever get upset? Do you, do you ever go off? Do you ever blow your top? I mean, they just took thousands upon thousands of dollars from the New Beginning Church and you're still moving forward. We have to move forward because we understand that God is our strength and He will strengthen us. Matter of fact, the Apostle Paul says that we are to make sure that we rejoice in all things. We must rejoice in everything. We are to celebrate God in the midst of trouble. One pastor asked me today, and, and I guess he was surprised to hear my, my answer. He says, he says uh, are you happy? Yes. Are you encouraged? Yes. Are you strong? Yes. And then his last question was, are you glad they did it? No. But I've learned that whatever God allows, he will strengthen us through it. Matter of fact, this word strengthen means that he will fortify us to the point where it will make us better in the future. Romans 8 and 28 declares that we know that all things work together for the good to them that love the Lord and to them that are called according to his purpose. Yes, we will be fortified. Yes, God is going to work it out for our good. It just hurts so bad while God is working it out. I say to you today, God will strengthen you to be able to handle it. God will bless you in the midst of it. Trust God. I, God says, will strengthen you. And as if we didn't hear it, as if Israel didn't hear it, he says, yes, I'll be your help. This word help means that he will be our protection. And he will surround us with protection. The word in the Greek means he will be our securer. God is with us. God will help us. And let me tell you, right now we are at the point in our lives where if God doesn't help us, we won't get help. We can't throw up our hands and give up because God is our helper. He is our refuge. He's the one in which we ought to run. God is our helper. It's a good thing to know that God is our helper. The story is told by a little boy that was in the, in the woods and he told his daddy, Daddy, I'm going to move this big rock from here to there. And the boy got a stick. He pried on the rock. The rock wouldn't move. He kicked it with his foot. The rock wouldn't move. Then he tried to push the rock and the rock wouldn't move. The daddy asked him, are you using all you have? He said, yeah, daddy, I'm using all my strength. I'm using all I have. He said, no, you're not. He said, why do you say that? I'm pushing hard. I'm trying to get it to move. I've kicked it. I've pried it. It won't move. I've used everything I have. He said, no, you haven't. He said, because you haven't asked your father to help you. Let me tell you, when we're going through things, we need to realize that God is our helper. And as we go through them, we have to ask God to help us. It was just revealed to me the other day, plainly and clearly, God says, if we pray, God will bless. And I said to myself, if I just pray, God will bless. We are called to prayer. And the thing about prayer, when you pray, the devil gets busy. When you pray, when you're on the cusp, of your blessing. The devil gets busy. He's trying to convince you that your helper is not strong enough. Your helper is not good enough. But let me tell you, our helper is God. And yes, he will help you. He says to us tonight, I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. He says that he will uphold us. Not only will he lift us, he will sustain us. He will maintain us. He will keep us steadfast. God will uphold us. And, and, and he will uphold us 
with his righteous hand. And when, when the Bible talks about the righteous hand and the right hand, he's talking about God's strength and God's power. No, we can't walk through it on our own. We can't do this thing on our own. But we're depending on God's strength, God's power. We're depending on God's righteous right hand. The word righteous means equality. The word righteous means prosperity. We know that God's right hand is considered the hand of power, the hand of strength, the hand of protection. He says he will uphold us. And he will sustain us. Not only will he hold us up, he will keep us there. And we will be steadfast, and he will keep us steadfast. The word righteous means equity. It means prosperity. It means that God will even the playing field. It, he, God will make your enemies become your footstool. God has a way of blessing us regardless of our race, regardless of our color. Regardless of our creed, God has a way of blessing us. And when he blesses us, this word righteous means moral righteousness. It means legal righteousness. It means that God has a way of giving us what we need when we need it, in the way we need it, at the time in which we need it. God blesses us. That's why I oftentimes say, let's pray for God's favor. Because when we pray for God's favor, God gives us favor. And he gives us favor in such a way that he blesses us in spite of us. When we haven't done the right thing, God keeps giving us favor. When we don't do things the right way and we make mistakes, God keeps giving us favor. And he gives us favor even when we don't deserve it. Because he has chosen us. We haven't chosen him. God has chosen us. He says to Israel, I have chosen you. And he said to Israel that he has called the other nations to a courtroom. And he is the final judge. Those enemies that have come up against you. Those enemies that have come up against us. God has blessed us. And he's going to give us favor He's going to bless us again and again. He is going to pronounce us innocent. He's going to pronounce us prosperous in the midst of our enemies. Because we are righteous. And we're not righteous on our own. It's because of what Jesus has done over 2,000 years ago. Jesus the Christ has made us righteous. Jesus Christ took the unrighteous and made us righteous. Over 2,000 years ago, Jesus died on a skull hill called Calvary. He died for mean men. He died for selfish people like you and me. Jesus died on a skull hill called Calvary. He died between two thieves. Mean men killed him on this hill. On a cross, they killed him. He died. He was all the way dead. He had no more breathing. He had no more blood pumping from his heart. He was all the way dead. Jesus died on Calvary. They took him off the cross, laid Jesus in a borrowed tomb. But early that third day morning, he rose with all power from the grave. He rose from the dead. The grave couldn't hold him. Death couldn't keep him because he has all power. Who wouldn't serve a God like that? The door of the church is open. Jesus Christ wants to be your Lord. And Jesus Christ wants to be your Savior. You ought to try him today. After you've tried it. After you've tried them. After you've tried her. After you've tried him. Try Jesus. Matter of fact, don't wait till you try these other things. Try Jesus now. Try him. He won't disappoint you. He's the son of this great God. And this great God says, try me and see. 
We all have hit rough patches in our lives from time to time. But the fact of the matter is we have Jesus on which to hold. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10 verses 9 and 10, if you just believe this simple story, that Jesus died for your sins, was buried in a barred tomb, and rose early that third day morning, you can be born again. And if you're going to be protected by God's righteous, powerful right hand, you're going to have to get to know Jesus. Don't run to the gun. Don't run to the knife. Run to Jesus. Will you trust him today? Will you trust that Jesus can handle your problems? He can handle your concerns? That Jesus can give you favor and he will pour out blessings upon you in the midst of your troubles? Will you try Jesus? If you would, believe this story that over 2,000 years ago he died on a skull hill called Calvary. They buried him in a barbed tomb, but early that third day morning he rose from the dead. If this is you, why don't you bow your head with me and invite him into your life and just repeat this simple prayer after me and Jesus will make you whole. Say these words, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life and make me a new person. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and thank God. We believe if you honestly pray this prayer, believing that Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection will get you to heaven, we believe that you're on your way to heaven when you die. We believe that Jesus the Christ is now your Savior and He wants to be your Lord. And there are others of us who struggle with our sin. Let me pray with us who struggle. Who every time we would to do good, evil is present with us. Will you pray with me? Lord Jesus, here we are. We praise you. We honor you. We thank you for another chance to get it right. We ask you to forgive us for our sins. Forgive this whole nation. Lord, we repent. We ask you to forgive us for messing up over and over again. Forgive us for our evil ways. Forgive us for our evil thoughts. Forgive us for contemplating wrong. We pray that you bless us today. Lord, we ask you to rededicate us. We repent. We renew a right spirit. Through you, Lord, we ask you to renew a right spirit within us. Lord, forgive us. We pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. Those of you who are without church homes, I recommend the New Beginning Church where Jesus is the center of attention and the main attraction. I recommend the New Beginning Church where you can become a part of a great family of unity. Where we believe that God is with us. And when God is with us, nothing and no one can defeat us in the name of Jesus. Thank you for listening. Thank you for being a part of our service. Thank you for, for tuning in. It is now offering time. It is now time to give to the Lord through tithes, offering and sacrificial gifts. And you can do so by one of two ways. You can do so by mailing your gift in to P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. That's P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. That's to New Beginning Church, P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. Or you can send your offering in by way of Zelle. Our Zelle account 
It's lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Regardless of which way you give, please, ma'am, please, sir, put your name and your address on there so we can thank you for your contributions. There are many who are concerned about our condition with our electricity being stolen from our church, vandalized. Many are concerned and they are giving. If you would give by way of Zelle or by P.O. Box, again, our Zelle account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Our P.O. Box is P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas 77459. And please put on there building fund. We would like for you to give to the building fund as we build back together what the thieves have taken. I want you to be encouraged today, new beginning, to know that God is with us and God knew this before it happened and God is going to bless us and he's in the blessing business. So many family members, so many friends, so many pastors, so many churches have already reached out to us and they're blessing us because they have seen the damage that has been done. And we're looking forward to celebrating again in our church home that God will get the glory and that the devil will have to go back to hell where he came from. Let's go to God in prayer. Father God, we thank you now. We bless your name. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. God, we thank you for this privilege of walking with you. God, thank you for being with us. Thank you for being a part of us and allowing us to be a part of you. Thank you for abiding in us and thank you for blessing us to abide in you. We ask you to bless us, Father God. Bless the parents, the siblings of those children who have been brutally murdered, murdered and, and those adults who have been murdered, Father God. We ask you to bless them in the name of Jesus. Bless these families that, that they will be able to regroup. They will be able to be prosperous. Lord, bless our nation. Heal as only you can. Bless as only, only you can. Lord, we know if anybody can stop the violence, it is you. Lord, we ask you to shut it down. We ask you, Father God, to walk with us. We ask you, Father God, to secure us, to fortify our nation, to be a Christian nation that will give you the glory. We ask you to bless us as we praise our way through, that we, Father God, would be assured that you are our God, and you are our helper, you are our keeper, and you'll continue to bless us. God, we thank you for being our ruler. We thank you for being the final judge, the great and mighty one. God, we ask you to bless us, Father God, with your strong, righteous right hand. Lord, if anybody's confused, we ask you to relieve all the confusion. Bless them to call on you. If anybody's burdened, Lord, we ask you to lift their heavy burden. We ask you, Father God, to bless us to be shining examples for the world to see. That life will continue to roll and that we will give you the glory in all that we do. It's in the precious, anointed name of Jesus Christ we pray and we ask it all. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling. Unto him the only wise and only true God. Unto him be power, be glory, in dominion. Until we meet again. Let us say together, amen, amen, amen. God bless you and God keep you is our prayer. Thank you so much for joining us here at the New Beginning Church, 4251 Sure My Road, Houston, Texas, 77048. Thank you and God bless you.